Hey there, Arconiacs. The newest episode, Ghostlight, doesn't really shine light on new suspects, but it did bring up more questions and had Ollie Mabel at their lowest point we have seen. So let's decode only murders in the building. This is turning out to be a very strong season, with this episode being among my favorite. There will be a small section at the end of this video where I talk about a TikTok that Selena posted from the set before the season started and how some of what we see in it will tie into the events this season. But before that, let's decode. This episode started with Howard seemingly admitting to killing Ben, but it turns out that Howard only thinks he caused Ben's death because he did not do his ritual to ward off Gideon Gooseberry's ghost. Then we get Tobert coming in without pants, like he owns the place. I feel like I'm missing some context of what kind of relationship Mabel and Tobert are in. If his pants were in another room, I'd think he should just call for Mabel to grab them or something. I don't like this guy's vibe. But the trio steps back to talk about a plan of action, and this is where we see the cracks of the relationship escalating. Mabel turns her back on her olds and talks with Taubert about a potential lead. Charles and Oliver ask Mabel what's going on. She has to reiterate that Taubert has been investigating too, and that they met up to follow a lead. I think it would have been nicer for Mabel to just bring Charles and Oliver into the fold with this information, but I also see her frustration. Oliver is scared that his love and star of the play Loretta is guilty and he seems to be planning to keep them away from anything that may incriminate her. Later at the theater, he successfully gets rid of everyone so he can go back to Ben's dressing room and confirm or not if Loretta is the one that wrote on Ben's mirror. I believe it looks as if the F and maybe the P do match and Oliver is beside himself. He calls out for his friends to say something that they must see and I feel like he was going to admit that the lettering does look the same but he's hoping that she is still innocent but in his heart I do believe he feels that she is guilty. But he stopped when he's drawn by the sounds of what might have been the ghost of Gideon Gooseberry, but turned out to be former director of Death Rattle, Jerry Blau, who was first mentioned not by name at the end of season two when Donna DeMeo calls Oliver to direct the show. After being fired, Jerry has been living in the theater and Oliver calls his area the Phantom's dorm room. A nice little nod and I do believe that the falling sandbags and the puppets are both little nods to the Phantom of the Opera. Jerry himself has been afraid to go home but reminds Oliver that the lack of action is the only way you are bound to fail and I think Oliver was afraid to fail. He was afraid to become like Jerry and chose to save his dream and the lady that he loves than have his show be known as the disaster that it actually is. In this episode, Oliver is unhinged. He's always been a little cocky, but he's destroying the relationships with people who brought him out of this hole for the chance not to see himself as a failure to keep his dream alive. He's tampering with evidence. He's harboring someone who he may think is a murder just so his play can be seen and hope that it's a success. He's acting very dangerous and I'm not a very big fan of it. Charles is very lost this episode, traveling around with a fish. You can tell he's feeling very alone. He's trying to reach out, but this man is old and self-absorbed, so he's not the best at wording things. He's very accusational by default, though I feel it's done out of fear. He's just not connecting with anyone. Towards the end of the episode, Mabel laid into them, rightfully so. Boys have not been good friends or acting logically. Some of Selena's most dynamic acting in the show was in this episode. She's usually not very emotional, but this scene warranted it, and she gave it to him. It's what made the ending seem so real and so sad, and helps justify Mabel's actions, leaning into Tobert, investigating on her own. I will add, I do think Charles is right when he said that Tobert is a stranger and you should be careful who you trust. It was also a low blow for Mabel talking about Charles trusting and his ideas of who should be and who shouldn't, that he shouldn't be given such advice. Mabel herself doesn't have the best track record either. I don't think she should be talking about that. I mean, Alice wasn't a murderer, but she did some very messed up things. Overall, it's one of my favorite episodes, even though it didn't move the story too far forward, but we still have plenty decoding to do. First, we get a pretty quick explanation of why Jonathan met with Dr. C to get an anti-anxiety cocktail. I was wrong thinking that it was some kind of cat dander medicine, but the interesting thing was that it included meth, 
Now, I know a lot of people at first will think this is a little wild, but it is an FDA approved drug under the name Desoxin. It's used to treat obesity and ADHD. Now, I still think that it would be a little odd because it is a stimulant and if you've got anxiety, I didn't I don't think you want to be stimulated. But Jonathan stated that Ben was taking these same meds. And if that's the case, why did his blood work come back clean? Maybe because it was a prescribed medication and the amount was negligible? If not, that would mean there was a high level person hiding Ben's toxicology report. And I just don't think that happened, but we will keep an eye on it. I just think it's just wonky writing. Also from the inciting incident of this episode, Howard said he was unable to sweep the stage because Katie's office was locked and he heard a weird noise inside. Katie stated that someone else had to have locked her door. Now I'm taking two positions on this one. Katie was lying for whatever reason and it was her in the office, maybe, or it was someone else. I'm going with the latter and I think that the sound Howard heard was Katie's shredder. There was a little focus on the shredder and I thought that it was a little bit more than necessary so I'm guessing that for some reason it's a plot point. Who or why would someone shred something in secret? Assuming there's no digital copies of whatever they were shredding, my guess it was some kind of contract, maybe one for Ben to endorse Liquid Venom, or maybe some sort of NDA. I am not really sure, but Dickie, Don, and Cliff are my top suspects of people who would be in the office in the need of a shredder. But again, this could have nothing to do with who killed Ben. My favorite moment from the episode was Charles in the closet almost flushing the fish and I laughed out loud at his stress and the smoke machine going off, Charles thinking it would kill him. It was beautiful, though it does kind of go back to original idea I had at the end of season two when we see Ben cough right as someone is wafting smoke on the stage. Thinking back on it, I do think other people should have gotten sick from the smoke, but it still may play a part, so we will keep a pin in that also. Right now, the group is very fractured. I don't know how Oliver can come back from what he said, but we do know the three will make up and get back together, and I believe we see that from this clip in the trailer. Want to make a podcast with me? Oh my god, this is corny. So corny. <laughs> I know it is. Yeah. So fear not, our trio will podcast again. Before I get into what may be considered spoiler territory, only talking about a TikTok Selena posted over a month ago, I want to thank you all for watching, and if you don't want to hear about what was seen in that TikTok and how it relates to this week's episode, you can leave now, but still, let me know your thoughts in the comments, and most importantly, who do you think was in Katie's office? Now, let me go over what I found in Selena's TikTok over a month ago and how it's finally going to appear this season. And I'm guessing the scene that we saw will be part of episode eight or nine. I previously did a video breaking down the TikTok. I'll leave a link in description, though a lot of it is irrelevant at this point from everything that we've seen. But in the scene, we see a very quick glimpse of the murder board. But the first thing is, this murder board is in Charles' apartment, letting us know that not only will the trio get back together, but they will move the board to Charles' place where it originally started. This could be because they have already made up, or possibly because someone is moving into Mabel's aunt's apartment. Something is telling me it could be Matthew Broderick. More importantly is what's on the murder board. In the breakdown, I stated that I thought it was a tea packet, but it turns out it was rat poison. We see Oliver pick up the same package in Katie's office in this episode. And don't forget, we actually see a rat crawl across the screen. This tells us that rat poison is thought to be a possible means to kill Ben. At first, I thought that maybe this was used by Oliver to throw the investigation away from Loretta. It may be possible, but I think that she is in that scene, so that is very unlikely. Ben may have unknowingly ingested rat poison with the most common active ingredient, protofascium. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. But symptoms from the poisoning is bleeding from the gums, weakness, coughing, labored breathing, and sudden death. And that kind of sounds like what happened to Ben on stage. But again, this should have come up in his talks report if this is the case. 
After bring up again, what was shown next to what we know now is rat poison. This thing with a picture of a rattle on top. I stated that I thought it was a cookie, and if it is indeed a death rattle themed cookie, it's possible someone put rat poison in it. This poison is said to have a slightly sweet taste, and Ben would have not known any different. This has me leaning towards Kimber again. But please, if you mention this portion of the video in the comments, put a spoiler warning in a few spaces so others don't happen upon this information unwillingly. I want people to enjoy the show in whatever context they prefer. And I thought about making a separate video for this, but it seemed like just too much for a little bit of information. But if you would prefer it in a separate video, something like this, please let me know. I just want this to be as accessible for as many people as possible in a way that they enjoy. Either way, thank you all for watching this episode's review. I'll be back in a few days with another theory video. My name is Dallas. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you on the rooftop.